right, Math 31, we're at the end. All right, and we're gonna head backwards in example nine. I'm gonna ask you to write an equation for a rational function, and I'm gonna give you some traits. So I'm gonna tell you there's a vertical asymptote at x equaling negative four and x equaling negative one. I have two x-intercepts at one and five, and then I have a y-intercept at zero. So with that, I want us to come up with a function. So I'm gonna have f of x is equal to, and I want some kind of function. All right, some kind of ratio. So here we go. If you have a vertical asymptote at negative four, you know x plus four must have been a factor. Right? This has to be associated with x plus four, and in that same vein, this has to be associated with x plus one. Well, where do vertical asymptotes live? Do they live where your numerator only zeroes out, where your denominator only zeroes out, or where both zero out? And if we think back to vertical asymptotes, they occur when your denominator only zeroes out, okay? Now, x-intercepts, if I've got one at one and five, respectively, this has to be associated with the factor x minus one, and this has to be associated with the factor of x minus five, okay? Now, where do x-intercepts occur? Do they occur when only your numerator zeroes out, only your denominator zeroes out, or where both numerator and denominator zero out? And x-intercepts, they occur when only your numerator zeroes out, so these factors are gonna show up on the numerator and only the numerator. Now, I didn't do this here, but let's say it had said, instead of x-intercept, it had said whole, at one zero, so let's just say it said whole, I'd have an x minus one in the numerator and in the denominator. Okay, the only thing we're unsure of is the stretch factor, all right? We had done transformation, so I'm gonna put a little constant out here. I just don't know how far I'm stretching this function, and I'm gonna use the y-intercept to determine that. And you don't need necessarily the y-intercept, it can be any ordered pair on your graph, but I gave you the y-intercept. So we're going to plug the y-intercept into our function to solve for a and figure out what that stretch factor is. So I'm just gonna tell you the directions, right? So plug your y-intercept into your function to find the stretch factor. And this stretch factor goes all the way back to chapter three when we were doing transformations of graphs. All right, are we stretching or shrinking our y values? All right, so if I'm gonna plug my y-intercept in, it's saying when x is zero, y is seven. So I'm gonna plug zero in for x in these four spots, and I'm gonna plug seven in for y in the function. All right, so let's see what we have here. So I will have seven is equal to a times, what do we got, zero minus one, zero minus five, wait for it, zero plus four, and zero plus one. All right, so I've got my stretch factor, I've got my equation started, so I have, I'm gonna put the seven on the right side of the equation. I usually like my variables on the left side. Um, so we have negative one times negative five, which would be positive five. I have positive four times positive one, which would be four. So I have five-fourths A, equaling seven, I'm gonna divide by five fourths, which is like saying A would equal seven. Dividing by five fourths is like multiplying by four fifths. So I'm looking at what, 28 fifths? So if I wanna write up my function, I have F of X will be equal to, all right, in my numerator I'm gonna have 28, X minus one, X minus five. And in my denominator I am going to have a five and x plus four, x plus one. All right, now I am solid. Oh, let me scooch this up just so we can see it. I am fine if you leave your answer this way, where it's factored. I actually think it's, it's better for when it's factored, but your book is really intent on everything getting multiplied out. So just for the sake of multiplying these out, I'm gonna go through the mechanics of it, but I want you to hear that this is totally fine to leave it this way. So I could multiply the binomials. So I would have 28, this would be x squared, uh, minus five, minus one, so minus six x plus five. And this would be five times, let's see, x squared, one and four is five. 
All right, that is fine by me. Oops, and actually I mixed those up. Let me rewrite that. Okay, and if I wanted to go further and keep distributing, I could have 28x squared minus, okay, let's see what 28 times six is. Um, 168. Um, 28 times five. Oh, if I just subtract 28, that's actually nice. That's 140. Okay, and then we would have 5x squared plus 25x plus 20. All right, so any of these answers are acceptable. Okay, so all are acceptable. So any of those answers, oh, let me scooch that up just a wee bit. Any of these answers are totally acceptable for me. Your book really is into this. Me personally, I'm into the first version because it's the least amount of work. And I've said for a long time that I'm lazy. All right, so with that, whew, all right, take a deep breath. We got through this section, but this section is intense. So when it comes to what I'm expecting for you to, or what I'm expecting you to know, you need to be able to graph rational functions, which means you need to find the traits, traits that you'll have to look for. Always start with your domain, all right? Always find the domain of that rational function, all right? Figure out the asymptotes, verticals, horizontals, and slants. And I say horizontal or slant here because you can't have both. You'll either have one or the other. Now on the vertical asymptote front, you might also have holes floating around, all right? And take all of those traits and graph your rational function. And in terms of the traits that you're going to be responsible for, right? We'll have for every rational function, I want your domain. I want your X and Y intercepts, right? And those come from the places they always have. For a Y intercept, let X equal zero. All right, it's usually it's one point, not usually, and I say usually one point, it's zero comma a number. I say usually because sometimes your Y intercept might not exist like on the reciprocal function. For x-intercepts, let y equal zero, and that means look for when the numerator only zeroes out. For your end behavior, you have a lot of options. You have four cases, so make sure you know how to distinguish those four, right? What is the relationship between the degree in your numerator and the degree in your denominator? All right, make sure you know not only how to find a vertical asymptote, but how to write it up correctly. If it's not in the form x equals a number, I'm gonna dock you. Right. For holes, you're looking for where you have a common factor in your numerator and denominator, or x values that zero out both your numerator and denominator. Make sure you know how to find that x-coordinate and that y-coordinate. And you're going to be graphing these functions for me. Right? Sometimes you'll have just straight vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Sometimes, like here, you'll have a vertical and a slant asymptote. And when you have those slant asymptotes, like we did, I think it was in example seven, you're gonna to wanna to use your calculator to find those max and min points because you might need those for your range. All right, so with all of that, that's a lot. All right, so make sure you're going over these examples, trying examples in your book, asking me questions, looking at the con um, tutorial videos that are, I've attached or I've, I've put up on Canvas. You really wanna put some time into this section. It's intense and it's on your midterm. All right, so with that, thanks so much for hanging with me, guys, and I will see you in the next section. Bye.